Hey, family. Peace and love to my kings and my queens, my brothers and my sisters. I greet you all with love and light. Of the Most High God, the infinite creator, source of all things, source within. I hope all is well with your family. Thank you for checking in. For those of you who, um, third eye is active, you are able to see within yourself, um, some more than others. For those of you who can relate to your sister and, um, whether you are in meditation, um, or when you lie down, um, you're ready to go to bed and you're resting your eyes, you know, before you go into that deep, deep sleep. Um, and many of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a light that's round and it looks circular looking, sort of circular looking, okay? And um, for me, I see this light inwardly. Okay, and I also see this light outwardly, but when I go, now I say outwardly, it's, it's all kind of beautiful colors, okay? It uh, sort of reminds me of a, a chakra, a spinning chakra, okay? It's morphing into beautiful colors like uh, red and green, blue and green, green, blue and violet. Um, like right now I see it, um, when I'm staring at a wall, I see it, um, and it's pulsating, it's pulsating also, flickering, it's flickering. Um, I notice, depending on the mood that I'm in, um, how it will, um, change certain colors, like it might go from red to orange, you know, and I, and I thought about it, I'm like, wow, these are like chakra colors, you know, uh, based on my mood, um, and when I'm in a good mood and, um, you know, um, I'm feeling good and my ears are, like, you know, ringing or whatever, you know, I start seeing, you know, a little green, a little violet, um, it depends, it depends, but I'm like, wow, you know, this is sort of like, it's sort of like it's reacting to my energy, you know, my vibration, you know, or my mood, shall I say. So anyway, um, I also notice when I go inwardly due to meditating, um, I would, and I've stated this before in my past videos, I would notice um, it would look a little different. Um, at times, I would still see it. I would still see it at times, you know, um, looking like solid colors inside this um, ball of light that's constantly moving. Okay, it's always in motion. It's always in motion. But a lot of times, when I'm observing it, it's spinning. You know, it's either spinning to the right or spinning to the left. It's doing like this sometimes. And I didn't really know too. I didn't really know what that was, to tell you the truth. Um, I had to do some research because I really wanted to know what was going on with me. Um, I know I did a reading on me one time, and um, the spirit had led me to a card. It was telling me to start reading more esoteric books, and there was a time I would not read books like that, you know, uh, due to programming. And back then, I was not having no experience. My third eye was not awakened. So, of course, you know, um, I thought of reading cult-like books, uh, esoteric books. Um, I sort of like, in my way of thinking, I looked at esoteric books as like cult books, you know. Um, I was in a religious, religious state of thinking, you know, if it ain't the Bible, you know, no pause of it, you know, but see, I wasn't having no experience, you know, and a lot of my, a lot of things I'm experiencing, a lot of it's not in the Bible, I truly believe it was taken out, okay, it's like a lot of Christ 
life, you know, was taken out. So all we know, all we know is from the age of him being a baby, and then and then there's a, then there's a, a you know a gap, and then we know what from him being twelve. You know, when he first him visiting the elders, when his mother was looking for him, and then there was a gap, and then it went all the way to him being an adult. You know, so it's like, you know, where are these missing books? You know, about his life, how he got to that place of awakening and coming into who he was. You know, uh, his as far as us seeing his life path, that's the point I'm trying to make. All that was taken out, and um, and come to find out that there are a lot of missing books. Uh, one must do their research now, but there are a lot of missing books that speaks about how he, you know, he was all over the place. He wasn't just in the Middle East, you know, walking around or on a donkey. You know, he was all over the place, you know. Um, he, he was visiting a lot of places, you know. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, I, I assume that this, we have these experiences. All the answers just has to be in the Bible, but, and I still believe that a lot of it, was in there, we were taken out because there are a lot of missing books that um, were taken out. Um, and you know, one must do their research, to, you know, to find these uh, missing books. And I've read a couple of them, you know, um, I read a couple of them, and uh, they do really do help as far as you know, bridging the gap. But then there's still a lot of books I have not read. Yet. And like I said, my, you know, um, you know, my guys, you know, they led me to a card. They said, seek more esoteric books. And a lot of these esoteric books have has a lot of hidden um, knowledge. You know, they call it cult knowledge. And don't get caught up in the word cult thinking it's evil. Because I used to do that too. Oh, let me borrow that witchcraft stuff. Oh, keep that from me. <coughs> Sorry, family. Little did I know. Um, yeah, one would probably consider me being a witch, you know, because um, I'm different and, um, you know, uh, I have awakened, like many of you have awakened and one be considered many of you as far as being a witch, um, definitely not the norm, shall I say. So anyway, um, and actually I did buy one book. All right, family, I had to get up, I had to pause real quick and get up and um get this book real quick. I did purchase one book and there are many others that I'm planning on purchasing because I am seeking, I am seeking, you know, um, I want to know what's going on with a sister, okay, like many of you. Um, there's a lot of information that's out here, but like I said, you know, um, especially when you have an experience, uh, there are people that uh, went before us that were they were also having these experiences, okay? And they wrote the information in the book, just like I'm having experience. And um, there are a lot of lessons that I've learned along the way. I can write a book myself as far as trying to help my brothers and sisters in the spirit. So it's no difference. You know, one just want the truth. And, and, and we're also seeking those who um, are spiritual, like-minded brothers and sisters like ourselves that can help us as far as let, letting us know we're not alone. And um, like I said, they're going before us pay, pay, paving the way and um, they have experiences and they are putting them in the book, you know, their knowledge or not that they have um, retained as far as doing their own research and they are putting putting them in the book. And like I said, research has its place, you know. So anyway, uh, I have purchased this book right here, the book of secret wisdom. This is a good book right here, family. This is definitely a good book. It's a, it's an esoteric book, and um, this is who's by you know one who's interested in um, purchasing this book and check out the content. Check out the content, family. It's um it just has a lot of um good information in here. I'm not gonna go all into detail, but what the point I'm trying to make is 
And I love to go to the index part, especially with certain words that I've been like, you know, looking for. I like to go to the index part. I go straight to the page. I go straight to the page. Okay. But anyway, um, books like this, if you're someone who has awakened spiritually, okay, and life as you know is not the way it used to be, shall I say, um, and you are seeking. I was just meaning of you to start um, purchasing esoteric books, okay? They have a lot of information as far as um, ancient knowledge, ancient wisdom, um, a lot of information that has also been taken out from um, the word, okay? Um, books like this, you will uh, find a lot of the information that you are seeking, okay? Um, but there are many of them, okay? Um... Let me just read this part right here real quick. Hidden away for long, hidden away for long millennium, the world's most ancient sacred text reveals the past, present, and future of humanity. A million years ago, the great master of wisdom recorded a mysterious manuscript wisely known as the Book of this D Z Y A N. And I'm planning on getting that one too. A Tibetan name meaning the Book of Secret Wisdom, written in a language unfamiliar to modern psychology um, called uh, Senzar, S E N Z A R. This oldest book in the world has served as the source of every ancient religion, philosophy, and science. The master stored it in the legendary realm of Shambhala each century admitting only a few chosen one to read some of his pages now notice when it said chosen one everybody cannot read these books and get it okay one must have an experience that's why when i used to read the word uh, a lot of i didn't a lot of it didn't make no sense to me and still and still a lot of it i still don't make any sense to me but a lot of it makes sense to me because i understand it a lot of it i've seen within myself so when it comes to these books, there's nothing wrong with reading them, but a lot of this information is going to go over many people's heads. If you have not had an experience, you know, you really read it for entertainment. But for those who can really understand and really relate, okay, um, you are chosen as far as understanding what uh, the meaning of the uh, words that are in the book. That's the point I'm trying to make. And um, where I'm at, let me see. Uh, I forgot where I was. Now, a new excerpt consisting of 12 Tanza, T A N Z A S, and supplemented with exclusive materials published in English for the first time. Reading through the pages of this of his work, you will be able to trace the whole course of the spiritual evolution of humanity and our earth beyond time and space. So anyway, um I just want to read a little part right here in the back, just give you a, a little background of what this book is about. Um, I read a couple of pages. Um, there's still things that I feel like is missing that I'm still seeking, but this book did help answer a lot of questions for me. Um, so if anybody's interested, you know, I'm not getting paid to, you know, promote this book. I'm just saying for those of you who are, are start to awaken um, and you are seeking, you know, um, seek uh, books like esoteric books, okay? They will really help you, and as well as me, as far as having a better understanding of what's going on with you, and also when it comes to things that you're seeing inside of yourself, okay? But anyway, real quick, let me go back to this so called spinning chakra that I see within myself because I'm sure it can help somebody. Um, if many of you come across seeing this phenomenon within yourself, you would know it. You would know it. Okay, uh, it just stands out. It's like a light and it morphs, okay, um, sort of round like, and it, you know, the, the center is always moving, okay, the center is always moving. And my understanding of it, um, when seeing this, uh, it's pretty much letting you know where you are, you know, as far as um, when it, due to your chakras, as far as letting you know whether you're balanced or not. Um, as well as uh, where you are vibrationally, okay? 
those colors are letting you know where you are vibrationally and how it's spinning on the inside let, letting you know whether you are balanced or not if it's spinning you know if you're if you're picking up on it and your focus your nose is spinning to the right that means that your chakras are all in line okay your balance the spinning to the left that means something is not balanced in you and uh, maybe you might find yourself <clears throat> feeling a little off you know at times uh you know even to one's mood even your even you feel off to your mood uh, when your chakra is off okay when your chakra is off um we all know that when our chakra is off you're not going to feel balanced and focus okay when you're feeling good and creative you know everything is in alignment okay um you're you're balanced in that area you balance as far as in your chakra area now also if you want to know like um take each chakra at a time and you're focusing on it and you want to know like if all your chakras are in line speak to your existence speak to your inner man your, your higher self on the inside close your eyes and say you know, is my sacred chakra balance, and you're looking at it right now. It might be moving before you even say it, but pay attention to where it's spinning. If this, if it's spinning to the right while you're saying it, and it keeps spinning to the right, that that chakra right there is balanced. But if it stop and it start doing like this, that means it's unbalanced, and that's the area you need to work on. Okay. And you can do your own research. I don't, have, you know, your sister don't have to tell you. You know, you can go uh, Google it or go on YouTube to get ideas of how to balance that chakra. Okay. Um, but I tell many of you, it's nothing like nature. Nature heals like no other. If you can, I know, you know, um, the season that we're in is cold outside. You don't want to plant your feet on the ground. Um, but if you can't go outside and put your feet on the ground due to do how cold it is, I don't want many of you to get, get to get sick or anything. Um, you know, meditation, find your crystal, okay? Um, Google your crystal. I mean, not, not Google your crystal, but find a crystal that's based on that particular chakra that can really help you as far as healing and getting balance and meditate with that crystal. That right there alone will help you um, get on track and then go back. You know, to that state of meditation, close your eyes and that light that you're seeing, uh, see how it's spinning. Then go back, you know, after you, um, you know, taking the time to, um, you know, uh, work on that particular chakra as far as getting it balanced. Then go back later and see, is it balanced? You know, but you would know because, you know, uh, like I said, you would see it inside of you because it's constantly spinning. And it's going to spin regardless, family. It's going to spin regardless. There are times I'm looking at it, and sometimes I'm doing like this. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, what is this, you know? But um, I don't really try to get too caught up in, well, mm, you know, uh, why is it spinning to the right and to the left? You know, because I know how I'm feeling, you know, because sometimes, sometimes I'm just off, you know, especially if I'm peeing and missing, shall I say. Sometimes I'm just off and it's just natural to be off, okay? Um, for us ladies, we cannot help it. You know, we have, we have our off days, you know, our off moments, you know, temporal off moments. But if you're someone, like I said, that can go within yourself and you're seeing this so-called spiritual inner chakra that is within you and it's spinning, you would you would know for yourself. You would know for yourself. Uh, you would know if you're off in, in one of those areas, okay? Because um, for the most part, uh, those colors will let you know which chakra it is, okay? You know, you might just see you might see red on the inside, and also it's moving like this, or you might just see one color or two color. A lot of times I'm seeing, a lot of times I'm seeing like one or two. You know, uh, I don't see one color too long. It always shift into, if I see one, it, it, it all of a sudden two will start showing up, you know. And, um, but when my eyes are closed, I'm, I'm all, I've am I'm never seeing one color. I'm always seeing, you know, two or three colors, you know. But it's different when my eyes are open. When my eyes are open, I'm not seeing the spinning. When my eyes are open, I'm just seeing, like, morphing colors. Um, that's how I see when my eyes are open. And... It is doing some kind of spinning, but it's hard for me to really zoom in as far as me knowing which way it's spinning. But for the most part, I'm seeing colors, you know. 
that are shifting and morphing. That's what I'm seeing when my eyes are open. But when my eyes are closed, I can really zoom in and focus as far as paying attention to the center and seeing which way it's moving. So that's all I want to say. I want to share something real quick in this book family because a lot of you don't want to buy it and you don't have to, you know, you can go to the library, whatever you choose to do. But I just want to share something with you real quick. All right, family, um, I'm not going to make this video too long. I know I've gone over 20 minutes and I apologize. I do everybody attention span is short like your sister. But anyway, this um, one chapter that I want to uh, read real quick, well, one page, um, I think it's very important. Um, I'm always talking about the heart, the heart. We must protect our heart, okay, because if the enemy can uh, corrupt you, inwardly you know because there's a lot of things that are going on outside of us okay but if the enemy the powers that be spiritual weakness in high places if it can co corrupt you if you let that which go on outside of you taint you on the inside all right that's its number one job so uh, it is important for us to protect our heart our heart that's why i say we try to be in your heart space okay but that's a sacred place and Nothing, if you protect your heart space, nothing can take you inwardly, okay? So anyway, um, there's a chapter called The Knowledge of the Heart, okay? And it's seven, right here. The Knowledge of the Heart. For those who have ears to hear, please um, help ears to hear Sister read this real quick. Um, I think it's very important. I just want to share this with many of you. Like I said, a lot of you probably won't even purchase this book. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read this right here and this. Now, some of these words are kind of, I do the best I can as far as trying to pronounce them, okay? So just be with your sister. So check this out. This is called um, The Knowledge of the heart and um, just take that which many of you can resonate and that which, which you cannot don't worry about it okay everything is not for everybody I just want to share this with many of you because I know somebody um, is something in this text that somebody can use and it will help them to have more understanding of as far as what's going on with them you know as well as the bigger picture. The day arrived, the will gradually gained momentum and led human hearts towards knowledge. Some, something the heart had known for a long time, but man was not yet able to comprehend the wisdom of his own heart. He had not actually guessed what the heart was capable, capable of knowing. And all of the while, the still small voice which imparted the wise counsel of life was partially inaugurable to the insensitive human ear. And even when that voice rang out with unmistakable clarity, like an alarm bell calling its hearers to arm themselves with the power of love, on the eve of death, man attempted to muffle it, preferring to take a round about route through a labyrinth and machinist of the mind. But the intellect was not able to perceive what the heart knew, for it was subject to decay. Evil could easily penetrate there into not fearing any encounter with the bright, dazzling light of the fiery thought. Man could think only on the lowest level, and so the will begins a new round. I apologize. I know many of you get distracted. Um, it's just that allergies. I apologize. I want to read that again. I want to read that again. Maybe many of you have ears to hear, okay? Just close your eyes and listen, okay? But the intellect was not able to perceive what the heart knew, for it was subject to decay. Evil could easily penetrate there into not fearing any encounter with the bright, dazzling light of fiery thoughts. 
Man could think only on the lowest levels, and so the will begins a new realm. All right, people gradually began to pay attention to the leading of their own heart, becoming convinced that the mind contemplation more often than not led them to the wrong conclusion and the barely perceptible voice of the heart. It appeared had pres presage the truth and so there was a pressing need to hearken to that which possessed the wisdom of insight. But how do, I'm sorry, but how to do this? How is it possible to avoid mistaking the voice of the mind for the inaudible terror of the current of the heart? People became thoughtful once again and the heart meanwhile was still waiting for the time when it would when it could be accepted as the best and most faithful friend. The sun was shining, keeping a close watch on human hearts. He tried to nourish them with fire in a bid to reinforce the power of life. Life herself was the gift of the light, for without him she could not be conceived. Would this world even exist if there were no sun? He gave the light, and it was in the rays of light that life had spread her immortal wings. Yes, life was immortal, for she was the forever companion of the light, who did not know death. Life and the light were one. The heart woven out of the light belongs to life. The most delicate particles of condensed matter were used in its formation. The heart secret was that it could not live without love. Only love, energized current, could win, could win the hidden mainspring therein, the spring that allows the will of life to rotate. The heart without love was dying away, losing its life force, even turning to stone. Okay, I'm gonna read this right here, then I'm gonna stop, okay? The darkness was overtaken those people who had trampled down their inner light and so were useless to life. These were the people of death whom evil was penetrating continuously, not only their thoughts but also their breasts, wherein he ruled on a soulless throne of stone. There was nothing for him to fear, for a stone could not strike a spark that could have burnt the darkness tenacious pause. Oh, how the darkness desires such heart. Oh, I'm sorry, one had to work very hard to get one's own way, and the darkness spared no effort or means to this end. If only she could see herself in scorn on the throne which had previously belonged to life. Now, that's all I'm going to read. It's more to it. It is, it is. But I don't want to make these videos long. I really don't. But anyway. This right here is a must read, family. It is a must read. So if some of you want to zoom in, you can zoom in and finish this part right here, no problem. I stopped right here and um, I didn't read this and I didn't read this. Like I said, it's more to it. But anyway, um, yes, brothers and sisters, for those who have had their spiritual awakening, I would invite you to start. Um, if you have, are a seeker like your sister, I would invite many of you to start um, checking out more esoteric books. Seek those books out because that which um, you are seeking, um, you're going to find the answers in these kind of books, okay? It has a lot of the um, missing, hitting um, knowledge, okay, that has been taken out of the word because um, there were many people who were, um, you know, um, writing books and um, 
dropping a lot of jewels, shall I say, a lot of hidden jewels, okay, that even the Vatican has stored as well, okay, from the people. But anyway, it's okay for them to know, but they don't want people to know because they don't want people to awaken. But anyway, um, that's all I have for you today, family. I wish you all much love and light and abundance. And remember, protect your heart space. Protect your heart space. Because when you are in your heart space, you are in a place of love and non-judgment. I know it's, we see things that we don't like. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, we see things that we don't agree with. Okay. And it's okay. It's okay to agree and to disagree. But when you are in your heart space, okay, you know, you are in a place of non-judgment. You're loving people from where they are. You're loving people from, from where they are, even in all of their differences, you know. And that part and this and doing this protects you. It protects you as far as not tainting your heart and, and making you feel bitter about people because you know um, that energy that you're putting out being negative is. It affects you. It doesn't affect nobody else. It affects you. It tanks your heart. It lowers your vibration. You get what I'm going with this. And it's hard to really spiral up in these realms, in these dimensions, when your heart is tainted, okay? That's why the word said it must be light as a feather. In order for it to be light as a feather, uh, you must walk in love. Um, you must walk in a place of um, not judging nobody. Even though you see things that's crazy to you, you know, in, in the time that we're living in, uh, people are doing a whole lot, a whole lot, of, a whole lot of stuff. Okay, but it's their life. Pray for them. Uh, all you can do is focus on you. Okay, work on you. Okay. So anyway, that's all I was supposed to have to say. I love you in Christ, and um, I'll be back with another video. And um, like I said, watch out for those distractions, family. They're nothing but distractions out here. The power that be is throwing those little distractions left and right. It's trying to get us to stop and get off our path. But when you see it for what it is, hey, that's the main thing. See it for what it is and get back focused, okay? Get back focused. Meditate like your sister's saying. Get out here in nature, which heals like no other. And make lemonade.